producing black gold. Dinosaurs and caves in the ground, right? Once we produce the oil, there's just empty caves left beneath our feet. Well, if you think that, you would be wrong. It's more like this sponge. Welcome to Petroleum, the student course survival guide. And we're here to help make learning petroleum engineering just a little bit easier. The reservoir is porous and soaked in fluids, just like this sponge. Also just like this sponge, a reservoir is layered due to various sediments depositing over time. Let's say the top part of the sponge is a shale, less connective and rough, not an ideal reservoir. Whereas just below it is a sandstone, much more porous and connective, able to hold a lot more fluids. If it's only soaked in water, we would say this sponge has a high water saturation. When the sponge becomes saturated in fluid, I can squeeze it to produce the water and soap. I can keep squeezing it and more water and soap will come out. And I can keep squeezing and keep squeezing, but I won't be able to get all of the water and soap out to the sponge. Just like a reservoir, there's always going to be some residual oil left. Now, let's look at our layers. We've got our shale layer and our sandstone layer. The shale layer, which was less connected and less porous, held less water and soap versus the sandstone layer, which was much more porous, was able to hold a lot more soap and water. It's probably a good idea to start getting used to calling total volume bulk volume. So the bulk volume of our reservoir will denote as V sub B. And all it is, is the length times the width times the height. So that's our area of our reservoir times its height. And that is our bulk volume. And this contains all of the solids and all of the fluids of our reservoir. Let's go back to our sponge example. If we moved all of the solid parts of our sponge that couldn't hold fluids to the top part and all that area that were our pores that were holding our soap and our water to the bottom, it'd look a little something like this. We have our volume of solids and our volume of pores. Our pore volume will denote as V sub P. And porosity, we use the Greek letter phi. Now, all porosity really is, is just the ratio of our pore volume to our bulk volume. Therefore, our pore volume is just porosity times our bulk volume. Let's go back to our diagram. If you remember correctly, we had our volume of solids and our pore space volume. If we split up that pore space volume, what fluids are inside of our sponge? What fluids are inside of our reservoir? For this example, we've got water and we've got oil. There's a percentage that is water and there's a percentage that is oil. We'll call this our oil saturation or in our water saturation, which we'll refer to as S sub O. And all this is, is our volume of our oil over our volume of our pore space. It's just the ratio. Same thing with our water. Volume of our water over our pore volume. And therefore, our pore volume is just volume of water plus volume of oil. If all we had in this system is just water and oil, they all have to sum to be one, 100%. So, S sub O plus S sub W would equal 1 in this case. Our oil volume is just our saturation of oil times the pore volume. If we want to put that in terms of porosity, it's our saturation of oil times our bulk volume times our porosity. We can also put it in terms of water saturation. So our volume of oil would be V sub P times 1 minus the water saturation. Putting it again in terms of bulk volume and porosity, it would therefore just be V sub B times porosity times 1 minus the water saturation. All parts are taken into account. If we want to include gas in our reservoir, saying our reservoir is saturated in water, oil, and gas, 
it all still has to sum to be one of our saturations. Therefore, our saturation of oil plus our saturation of water plus our saturation of gas are all one. And all of those make up our pore volume. And our pore volume with our volume of solids all make up our bulk volume, reservoir volumetric.